Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Sixteen Shadow, and today we're not gonna be talking about uh, any video games. We're not gonna be uh, showing off anything as much. Uh, I just want to talk about something that uh, this program, this block, uh, something I have truly loved since I was a kid, as as long as I could really remember for uh, Cartoon Network. Now, there's a block, and you already know from the title and the thumbnail of this, of course, that's called Toonami. Toonami, if you don't know, has been around for 20 years. 20 years. I just want to talk about, really briefly, about just Toonami. Uh, a lot of it might be going into some animes, of course, that's what the main purpose of this block was for. But... Toonami really did change a lot for me. So, the whole Cartoon Network part, as in, you know, there was Powerpuff Girls, Kurosawa Kauri Dog, Scooby-Doo, Johnny Bravo, you know, shows like that. Dex's Laboratory, I Am Weasel, and whatever else. <coughs> Sorry, I am a little sick, like always. Like, I'm not going to say I don't like them, but truly, I did like them, right? But every day, right after school, after I got out of school, I would just love to go watch Toonami. Of course, it wouldn't be on every time I would be home right away. I would have to wait a little bit sometimes, uh, depending on what uh, channel you're on. Because at the time, when I first started watching Cartoon Network, especially the Toonami block, uh, I would have Cartoon Network, you know, like, what was it, East and West, you know, so it would be like two or three hours difference from each other. So, whenever I was watching a show and I wanted to watch Toonami, it would already be on in one part of uh, of either the either one of the two of the two networks, from East or West, on a, like Dish or DirecTV. And for this North America, I don't know about uh, everywhere else, by the way. So, I, I would always go home and just wanting to watch TV. I, I wasn't really much of the person I wanted to go outside and play, which is kind of weird to say. I, I did go outside and play with my friends, Giovanni, Emilio, Solomon, uh, Jacob, and what's not. But, you know, I wanted to just sometimes watch TV. And a lot of it would be on, would both, honestly, it would be Toonami, Kids WB, and, of course, uh, like the Nickelodeon stuff. I was mostly into Nickelodeon stuff. As well, for Disney, I don't remember what the hell was going on with Disney for real, but I wasn't like that interested in it. And I was just mostly watching the th three I just said. Kids WB was on. Uh, for me, it was Channel Thirty. It was it was uh, the WB channel, you know, Warner Brothers. Uh, after that, uh, I would go to Cartoon Network and or Nickelodeon. So for like I said. It was, trying to stay on topic with Toonami. Toonami would show some of the best shows I would ever seen ever. And I would have known. Like, I remember my sister watching Toonami as well. Of course, I remember the show that she specifically liked a lot was the show Sailor Moon. It makes sense. She's a girl. She likes to watch girls fight other bad guys like myself. I would li I liked watching guys fighting other bad guys as in Dragon Ball Z. So for her it was Sailor Moon and for me it was Dragon Ball Z. I don't really know to this day, because I know she doesn't have the best memory, if she liked D Dragon Ball Z. I did know she likes Pokemon <laughs> back then, I remember that. Uh, which by the way, Pokemon was later on on Tsunami, but way, way later on. <clears throat> so I can't tell you the exact year I remember watching Toonami. I do remember watching Toonami, it had Sailor Moon. So. I don't know the exact year of when I watched Tsunami. I don't. It could be 99 or 2000. Reason being, uh, I can only kind of connect the dots in between because of wrestling. Uh, wrestling was happening and it was mostly focusing on WrestleMania, uh, what was it? Uh, right after WrestleMania 17, or sorry, WrestleMania 17. Uh, it was either it was either, sorry it was either WrestleMania 2000 or 17, which I know was 2007. 2000 was 16, I believe, and WrestleMania 17 was in 2001. 
But, well, I could be totally wrong about that regardless, but still. I remember at that time, it had Sailor Moon. So I'm thinking it was 1999 or 2000 that I was watching Sailor Moon. So that kind of tells me that I was watching uh, Dragon Ball Z from the beginning of when Toonami aired for Dragon Ball Z. I do remember going to uh, a vacation uh, to Honduras when I was like at least seven to eight years old. Uh, and I, did, I, I, I specifically remember an image in my mind, like something I can never forget. Like It's a, it's a memory uh, that I said, I don't want to go to Honduras, Mom. I want to stay home to watch Dragon Ball Z. At this time frame, Goku was fighting Frieza. And I don't remember if it was a... Uh, what was it? <coughs> Sorry, uh, replay, a rew- a rewinds. I, f- I forget what the word is. Um, uh, of you know, showing the same thing over and over again. I don't know if it was that time frame that Dragon Ball Z kept showing the Frieza saga over and over and over again to Sand to Frieza. You know what I mean? So uh, at that point, I wasn't sure. I just remember I didn't want to go anywhere because I wanted to watch Dragon Ball Z. Mostly, I was wanting to watch Toonami. Uh. I was aware Beast War was on uh, Toonami, but I don't think I actually really watched it on Toonami. I, I remember watching it on Kids WB or a Fox Fox Kids. It was either one of the two. I think it was Fox Kids. But for me, I remember watching Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon at the beginning of it. Later on, uh, of course, I started seeing some shows like Rowan Warriors. I had no idea what the hell it was. Uh, I remember my friend Emilio owning actually one of the figures, and I thought it was the coolest fucking figure. They could kind of fly in the air just if you spin it really quick with this like spinner thing. It kind of reminded me a lot of Beyblade nowadays, but still, it it was kind of you know good, cool looking. So of course I liked what I was seeing. I've truly never really watched the show Running Warriors, but it was something I kind of did admire because of this cart with the you know the, the toy, not the cartoon, but the toy. So um. I do remember that some shows were starting to like air around Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon. That I was like, I wasn't sure. There was like new shows. Of course, um, I knew about Batman. Batman was a classic. It, it was all, it was always on like on uh, Kids WB. It was right next to uh, Superman as well. So of course, duh. Uh, the the new one. Uh, I don't remember if it was Tenchi Muyo or Tenchi Muyo uh, Universe, something like that, or Ten- oh, was it Tenchi Universe? I forget. I think it was Tenchi Muyo. Tenchi Muyo. Uh, it was showing that, and then Gundam Wing. I watched Gundam Wing. I honestly had no, no idea what was going on with Gundam Wing. <laughs> uh, I just remember I was watching Gundam Wing. I just don't remember anything really going on in the show. I, I remember watching it. No idea what's going on. I was like, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z. That's that seriously me. I was just wanting to watch Dragon Ball Z. Uh, so, and I remember watching Tenchi Muyo. I had no idea what was going on. Of course, I was like, what, eight, ten years old? I don't really remember. No, I really don't know. And uh, it was just like a guy with girls and a spaceship, and I was like, "What?" Uh, and I, I can't remember what the point of the show was till this day. I don't remember. I haven't seen it since then. But I think my mind it was about a guy trying to get these girls back on a spaceship, trying to go home. I think that's what I thought it was. But it did have some weird humor. I don't think I was aware of at the time. So, but I don't know. I do remember at some point in the age of tsunami. That there was a whole bunch of different Gundam-like shows. I had no fucking idea. Uh, I saw the first episode of a, a show. It was like... Uh, had a bunch of numbers. Had no idea what the hell it was. I looked it up, by the way, about all the Toonami uh, shows. I have a lot of lists right here. Looking on Wikipedia right now, actually. And I clearly remembered it was this one. It was Mobile Suit Gundam 0, 0080 or something like that. War in the Pocket. I remember like tanks and stuff being in the first episode. And I had no idea what was going on. I thought that was the same Gundam show as Gundam Wing. So I was I was already confused. So I had no idea what was going on back then. I was like still Dragon Ball Z. And then at some point I remember that Dragon Ball Z was kind of taking over the whole entire Toonami block. Uh, but I could be getting a little ahead of myself. I'm not too sure. I did remember uh, sometimes when I get home they started showing Dragon Ball. And I was like, what is this? Uh, Dragon Ball is basically before Dragon Ball Z. Of course, I didn't know. I had no idea. How could I know? So, I was like, is that Bulma? Goku? Yamcha? What? I'm all thinking, what What the hell? And I'm like, 
Piccolo a bad guy? It's like, what? You know, all that stuff was going through my mind. So, Dragon Ball was like a totally new experience. I was like hooked on my seat with Gundam Wing, Dragon Ball, and Dragon Ball Z. Everything else was kind of showing in between or within the, the block. I, I kind of didn't care, but I cared at the same time because it was there on the network. But I had no idea what was going on. Of course, you know, I watched other ones like, oh, was it, uh, I know Batman was still there, I think. Uh, uh, Be oh, no, Batman Beyond. Uh, I forget name. Big O was there. I, that was one show I didn't understand. Same as a kid. I think it was during Adult Swim, or it could have been before Adult Swim, because I remember on Adult Swim, they started showing Ernie Inuyasha at the time. And I always assumed Inuyasha was part of the, the Midnight Run uh, part of Toonami at some point. I don't know when they actually truly introduced the Midnight Run. Uh, but I, I, I remember watching Big O during basically the Midnight Run around there. Even though it was a school night, I would stay up to watch Toonami. Even if it was for Dragon Ball Z. Even if they just showed Dragon Ball Z literally four hours ago. I would just stay up longer to watch Dragon Ball Z again. Even if it was the same exact episode. It was just so good for me. I, I was so loving Toonami. For one, back to Big O really quick. I had no idea it was Big O. I, this, this is what I thought. I thought it was like a guy in a tux or I, I or it could have been a guy in, that was a butler. I don't know. I was, I was probably getting confused with Batman and what's not. That was in a big machine and he was taking down big monsters or, or mechanics. I forget. And I remember this whole... I don't know why I remember this. He does some move or something. And in the water, like... Makes its own thing, like like a wave or a shake or something. I don't remember why I remember that. It was like part of a commercial, or it was just a big thing. I remember from Big O, but still, it was like a show about big mechanical things fighting other big mechanical things or monsters. And I already thought of that from Gundam, so I was like, I was still confused about the show. So I think everything that was like that reminded me a lot of Gundam. So I had no idea what was going on with that. Uh, but there was a show that kind of not made me think of Gundam, and I actually like this because it's actually in the same uh, time frame as explaining and looking at Wikipedia too. Zoids and um, Zoids was totally a brand new concept for me. It was, I, I don't know, it, it was like so interesting. To, like have ro like these robots, it, like like you know, like you could control with humans inside. Have these robots. That was being controlled by people, and there was like a lion, a bird, or something, or like other freaking kind of lions, and, and people were like defense and attack and what's not, right? It was more like a strategy kind of gameplay of fighting people, like fighting like like teams, and that's what it was. It was team like fighting. I don't remember what was the point of it, but it was so interesting. I remember that once this one team, I don't remember the team's name got this one ace pilot that had this Zoid that was like the main Zoid of the whole entire franchise. I, I don't know his name. Uh, it was like the Zoid to take down. And this Zoid was like, he had all the power-ups. He could start taking down all these other Zoids. And he was like the main Zoid to watch. And I know I might be getting a little ahead of myself on this one, but I remember watching Zoids like Fusion or, or Zoid something. And that's where it started getting quite crazy. It's like, oh my god, you can fuse Zoids with other Zoids. So, I don't know. I really like Zoids. It, I remember it wasn't on Toonami for very long, the original Zoids, and then it kind of went to, like, like I said, Zoid Fusion or something, what it was. I don't know, I'll look it up. But it, it was totally different. I liked it. It was, like, not Gundam, and I truly liked watching Zoids more than Gundam. It was just, like, something totally out of the blue. And I like how I said that because, actually, the main Zoid was the color blue. Um, that I can remember. That or he was white. No, 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 sorry. He was white, but then his other powers were, like, turning blue and, I think, green or red. I don't remember. It was, just, it was like, it was an interesting, different show. I would re-watch Zoids nowadays, because I don't know where to really watch it. I don't know if it's on Hulu or, or something else. But still, regardlessly, Zoids was pretty awesome. Now, for the show Outlaw Star, um, at the time, I had no idea what was going on with that show. I was like, okay, cool, Cowboys in Space. That sounds pretty cool. But then, I already knew a show that was like that uh, because of, like, Friends or something. I don't know. It was, like, it was Cowboy Bebop. But I was like, well, there's two Cowboy-like shows. So, like, what? 
when people told me about Cowboy Bebop, I was not interested in whatsoever in the show. It was like, you know, it wasn't like that futuristic. It's about a guy with a gun, you know, trying to take down bad guys. Like, okay, cool, whatever. It doesn't sound as great. But when people explained to me Outlaw Star, it's basically cowboys in space. Like, literally, there would be people, you know, in space taking down other people in space and trying to do certain things like Star Wars. So I was like, oh, holy shit, you know, Outlaw Star. So that was a pretty good show, and I didn't know much of it, but I remember for sure, and I've been, I think everyone was this commercial, uh, the Broken Promises or Broken Dreams commercial when, when they, they, I don't know how, like, it had a bunch of references from Outlaw Star and Dragon Ball Z, uh, I think Tenchi Muyo or, or Roe Ken, I don't remember all of them, but it was like a big collage, it was like a minute or something long, and it, it was like so inspirational. Everyone knows what I'm talking about if you're talking about Toonami. Everyone should know what that is. I don't know what it's called, but I know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Um, as of some point, I, I'm aware that He-Man was on Toonami. I am looking at the list right now. I do remember He-Man being on Toonami. I watched it. I think I watched it on the Saturday block. I, I, I remember Toonami being on Saturdays. I do remember that. But, like, I think it was early Saturday. I don't remember. But I remember it being on Saturday, I believe, or close to being Saturday. Maybe like a Friday or Thursday. I don't know. I feel like a Saturday if it was. Uh, I remember watching it. I remember like knowing it was an older show, but it's a newer version of it. And I don't know. I wasn't that interested in it. I don't know if that was like the same thing for everybody else, but it was just like whatever. That's just me for me. So, uh, Samurai Jack. To me, that was like. Oh, cool! A Cartoon Network show getting on uh, Toonami, which I was like, whatever, you know, they've done that already with Powerpuff Girls and stuff. So, uh, I remember watching Toonami having Samurai Jack a lot on it, and at some point, Samurai Jack was starting to be on like the later point of Cartoon Network. Not Toonami, yes, yet, but it was on the later point of Cartoon Network. So, I do remember that. Uh, here's some other shows I do want to go over kind of quick. Cause I do remember them being there, but I truly didn't watch a lot of these, so. Let's go really quick. So, Rowan, uh, Roni Kenshin. I watched it, but I didn't watch it. I, I seen like pits and like bits and parts of it, but I think it was like during the the nighttime of it. Cause I remember the show being a little gruesome, a little I think at the time. Uh, but it might have been the same time like, as Big O. I don't know. But yeah, Rowan Kenshin. I remember it being there. Uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars. It wasn't Star Wars: The Clone Wars. It was Star Wars: Clone Wars. Totally different show, totally different animation. I did watch it. I thought it was pretty cool for its time. A lot of people don't like it nowadays because of the Clone Wars, but I remember Star Wars Clone Wars. It was like, there was even a point that Toonami did the whole Star Wars Clone Wars with Samurai Jack for like a straight whole day or something on like the Saturday block or something. I don't know. I remember that. That was like a big thing. But even I got tired of watching Star Wars Clone Wars and Samurai Jack uh, doing that. I think they did it like twice, actually, but I don't remember. Um... After that, uh, there was another Gundam show I, I was watching, but it was like, when I got home, it was kind of finishing and or starting. It was uh, Gundam Force. It was like the little mini Gundam guys. And there's no pilots in They're like actual living robots fighting other actual living robots. And I watched it. I liked it. I just don't think I remember anything really much about it. I'm serious about that. So, yeah. Uh, this one I remember uh, it being during like the 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock something frame. It might have been like Cartoon Network East or West again like I was saying. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. You, yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho. Sorry. So this one, huh, I remember watching it at my friend's Giovanni's house. Something about the show, I just didn't want to watch it at my own house. Um, I remember him watching, we were like waiting for Dragon Ball Z or something, I forget. Or Dragon Ball right after Yu Yu Hakusho. And... I would watch it. I don't know if it was really going on. Like, it was like these guys that can have powers with their fingers and arms, and and, and like this a sword out of nowhere, which is made out of straight out energy. So it, it, I kept thinking if it was a star, it was a Star Wars. I kept thinking of it like as a a Dragon Ball Z kind of ripoff. That's usually what I thought of it as as a kid. And it didn't make me mad. I didn't. I don't think I liked it as much because I kept thinking that. But the only thing that was at the time out. Um, that was on Kids WB because of the same U part in the in, you know in the name U U was Yu Gi Oh. So 
I, I just like, no, Yu-Gi-Oh is better or something. That, that was literally my logic of thinking back in the day. So, I don't know. That was just pretty interesting to me. Uh, as in other shows, I did watch a lot of Justice League, but I don't think it was on Toonami, honestly. Uh, here's where I thought it got crazier. After the whole finisher of Dragon Ball Z, right? After we finally got to beating Majin Buu, I didn't think that, I think that was it. And of course, it, it was the most talked about thing in school. I swear to God. Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z. I remember just going to school, sometimes being late to like, I was like, like what, fifth grade? I, I, I kind of forget, fourth, fifth grade, something like that. And all we would do is talk about what happened in Dragon Ball Z. We were all explaining ourselves how did how did Majin Buu survive this attack, and, and we were explaining ourselves how he survived. I don't remember if we really explained ourselves exactly if it was correct or not. I do remember saying like, "Oh, hey," or I don't know if it was me or somebody else. It was like you have to kill every part of him to for sure kill him, you know. So we were all like excited. We all wanted to watch the next episode of Dragon Ball Z, come, you know, like after school Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, Z, you know. So at that time frame, we were. All super excited to talk about Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I even remember the exact room, the exact TV, the exact house of when Goku finished off Kid Buu in Dragon Ball Z. The whole spirit bomb and, you know, the whole gathering of Earth's power and all that, you know, Vegeta, all that. So, I remember I was in my mom's slash dad's, uh, you know, whatever, my parents' room. Uh, at their time, at the time, uh, the parents' room was downstairs. At the other house, right? Uh, at my other house. So I, I didn't. I had. I wanted to say, quiet. I wanted to listen. Like this is the biggest climactic battle since Cell. <laughs> so we're, we're we just like, oh, we just like. I was just like quiet, please, everyone. So I went to downstairs. I just watched Dragon Ball Z there, and it was fucking phenomenal. It. It was so emotional. It was so talked about. We didn't. People just, just didn't shut up about Dragon Ball Z even at school. <laughs> uh, it was around the same time frame as of kept talking about nonstop Pokemon cards, Game Boy colors. Po- uh, what was it? What else? Beyblade was arriving at the scene. The school, you know, and they kept banning Beyblades of being played on the playground and what's not. Uh, so much stuff. See what Digimon was around the time as well, but we didn't. Many people didn't talk about Digimon. A lot of people liked it more better than Pokemon. A lot of people like Pokemon better than Digimon. We all know Pokemon is is better right now, but you know, as of uh, franchise wise, it, was, it got more money. Whatever, we all get that. But you know, a totally different conversation. But still, Dragon Ball Z was the biggest thing for me on Toonami. And right after Dragon Ball Z, no one, and I mean straight up, no one in school knew that there was going to be Dragon Ball GT. We were all blown away. We only knew about Dragon Ball, and we only knew about Dragon Ball Z. And Dragon Ball GT just comes out of nowhere. We're like, what the fuck? There's another totally different show of Dragon Ball Z. We're like, what the hell? There's like, no way. And and they're like, oh my god, Goku turned back into a kid. He, he went, And at you know, some point he went to Super Saiyan 4. And we're... So many shit was going on. Like I said, at a point in 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 Toonami, the whole block, the afternoon block, turned into just Dragon Ball related shows. It was just Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT. It was I I think I remember it being Dragon Ball first at like let's say four, and at five and five thirty, or whatever you know what I mean. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, 4, it was Dragon Ball, 4.30 to 5 was Dragon Ball Z, and then, uh, was it 6 o'clock or something like that, it was Dragon Ball GT, or something like that, and and, and that's what, that would be the whole block at, at, at one point of Tsunami. It was so fucking great, like, that's all I was watching, I was like, Dragon Ball Z, I was, I was in love, I was in love, I was like, thank you, Tsunami. And, of course, who could not love the Tsunami commercials? The their, their attitude, their you know the humor, the whole style. It was so different. It was so cool. It was so 
not what you would used to see on like Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, uh, other parts of Cartoon Network, and you know, whatever else. It was so different. So different that uh, at some point during the whole Dragon Ball like mayhem, that's where all the other shows I was starting to be aware of came out of the blue and I started comparing them to a lot of other things like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Beyblade, Dragon Ball Z, all sorts of other shows were coming out of the blue and this is where my anime was starting to start you know, my, my anime, yeah, my anime, like, like, thinking, you know, like, my, my, uh, I can't think of the words, like, my, 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 my interest of anime was starting to go higher, not because of Gundam and Sailor Moon, I, I liked them, you know, of course, Yu Yu Hakusho at the time, I didn't know, so all those shows, yeah, of course, they're great, I liked them, ish, I, some I didn't, some I didn't, I don't know, but this is where it starts getting crazier, at some point, Kids WB, got Toonami on their show. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, so we started seeing some of Toonami's related stuff on Kids WB. And I'm like, that's the only other network I watch when I straight up get home. So when I get home, this is how it went. I would go straight to Kids WB. Toonami is already there. It's already there, Toonami. And then once Toonami is done, on Kids WB, it would jump right over to Cartoon Network, continuing Toonami. You know how big that was for me? I I'm not even gonna lie to you. This is how big it was for me. So like every room in the house had cable, cause I don't know, it was like a it was like a connection thing, right? Don't remember if it was Dish or Direct TV at the time, but it was either one. And I was watching Kids WB like. Would say in the living room. No, actually, I don't remember really watching because if you're being in the living room. I think I keep watching. I was. I think I was watching either my room. No, it was in my grandma's room. I was watching Kids of You Beat, and it, right when it's over, like straight up, I would run to the hallway because I could see the television from the living room and the television from my grandma's room at the same time to see when does. Kids WB's Toonami jumps over to Cartoon Network's Kids WB uh, Toonami. Or Cartoon Network's Toonami, you know what I mean. So, I was so, like, waiting. And, no lie, it kind of blew my mind at the time. Because, right when uh, Tom said, Alright, like, see you later, or something like that, you know, on Kids WB. The second later, Cartoon Network, he's, he's there. I was like, what the fuck? I was so mind blown. And he would be there, and he's like, you know, back to the whatever the hell he says. You know, time to start watching. Well, he doesn't say anime. Just, just I love this job. I remember him saying that a lot. You know, love this job. You know, whenever he starts playing more uh, uh, shows on Toonami, and that's what blew my mind. So shows that were like already on Kids WB. Now we're just on the Toonami version of Kids WB's. Uh, you know, uh, shows on Kids WB. So we had Jackie Chan Avengers now on officially on Kids WB, which is freaking amazing. That show is amazing. It did eventually start showing on Cartoon Network, uh, Jackie Chan Adventure, but that's like a later point. Uh, I remember Teen Titans being on it, Justice League Unlimited showed on the Saturday night uh, block part. I remember watching that for the first time. Uh, Super Megas XLR, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed. This one was, uh, these two are like the biggest ones. Uh, Transformers Energon, because I didn't think anything would be passing Transformer Armada. Which I did actually like a lot. I didn't like Energon really. I was really hyped for it, but I kind of got disappointed. So I was like, where's all the Transformers little midget people? You know, all the little guys, you know, from Amada. I, I was so disappointed when I heard, like, oh, it's just Energon. Now they just want to get fucking energy. It's like, what the fuck? I don't care about it. So, yeah. Uh, the other one, this, this is a big one. I super compared this one to Yu Gi Oh! It was Duel Masters. Duel Masters, I don't even know how to play to this day. I wish I actually owned the game for the PS2. Same with Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament. I wish I had that game too. Um, it, it was like, the show, I watched the show. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. All I kind of understood was that you have like a main monster or something like that. This main monster can just 
either destroy your shields or something and he could just attack you directly and then it's over. I didn't get it. It was like, what's your life points and stuff? And I remember like me and my friend Giovanni was comparing so much that show to Yu-Gi-Oh. And I'm like, what the hell? No spell cards or whatever? I don't know. It, it was like, and we said his psychic. Like, that's Joey, if anything. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. We did the same thing with Ben 10. We kept thinking of, like, for some reason, Power Rangers or something. I don't remember. But anyways, um, yeah, so I thought of that a lot. Uh, I did watch the show a little bit of Astro Boy. It wasn't my thing uh, at the time. Uh, Rave Master, I liked, but I had no idea what it was about. But I kept confusing that with, um... Shoot, uh, the show it was on Kids of You, not Kids of It was on F Fox Kids. It's from the Shaman King. It, I kept thinking that was Shaman King for some reason. I don't know why. I know it was from the creators of Yu-Gi-Oh, Shaman King, but that—that's all I knew about it because that was the only thing I was watching it because it was like, oh, the creators of Yu-Gi-Oh. But in my mind, I was like, wait, Yu-Gi-Oh shows on Kids of You B. Why is this show that was made clearly from Yu-Gi-Oh on Fork on Fox for uh, was it Fox for Kids? Uh, Fox Kids. I'm like, what the hell? It's like, is this like a Digimon Pokemon thing again? Like, what's going on? I don't know. That, that's literally what I was thinking about back then. Uh, there's other shows I know that was on network. I just straight up didn't really care. Uh, was it Neon Genesis Evangelion? Ne I never really cared. I didn't understand it. I didn't. I don't think I liked it really. So, like, what else was there? I don't know. Uh, think yeah I don't remember I think yeah I think Superman was on there at some point I, I remember watching Superman I think on Toonami I just don't think I liked it as much as Batman but I don't know so at some point this is where the the new era of Toonami was I was already getting into junior high and I was already experiencing like you know uh, the new generation of anime stuff like like we we finished Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon's onto like was it Pokemon uh, Advance or something like third generation now? We're, we're past Johto. Uh, Beyblade is now on like Beyblade V Force, uh, but these are all on different networks. So what does um, Toonami show? <laughs> well, they started showing some pretty epic stuff that they got from for uh, Fox for Kids and. Uh, they did change it up to Fox for Kids or Fox for Kids, Fox Kids to uh, the Fox Box, and uh, Kids of remained the same. So, a lot of those shows started coming from that. So we got shows that were totally new. Some were like totally like out there or different. I'm like, what the hell? Some of them are like uh, the show. Ooh, sorry, I just kind of burped really weird. This one was called uh, Mayor or Mar. No, Mayor. Sorry, Mayor. It was a totally different kind of aspect. It was like a boy that can, out of nowhere, that kind of like could be in this world that has like a hammer or something. A maze? I forget. forget. And in this place, like, monsters kind of control it. But the show reminded me so much, and I mean so much, of Vito Joe. I don't know why, but it did. It did. So I don't know. It was pretty interesting for me. But other shows, like I said, we got to uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. I was like, Yu-Gi-Oh is not on It's like, that's great. Yeah, like Because now Yu-Gi-Oh has passed Yu-Gi-Oh. Now we're on GX on... Uh, uh, well, I wasn't even on Kids of Yubi anymore, actually. Yu-Gi-Oh GX ju jumped onto Cartoon Network like right away. Uh, it started showing on a totally different block than uh, Toonami. Uh, it was, I I'm not going to mention it because, I don't know. It was like a totally different thing. Uh... I think it was like a Maguzi or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I was kind of disappointed that you know Dragon uh, Dragon Ball Z wasn't on that slot slot anymore. But then uh, talking about Dragon Ball Z, actually, they started showing uh, uncut versions. I was like, what the hell? And I just realized it was just more episode fillers and stuff expanding the the verse of Dragon Ball Z. I didn't know that as a kid, but now uh, like yeah, it does because thinking about all the stuff and then he also did the same thing with Dragon Ball GT uncut and I was like okay and you know what to this day I still haven't finished Dragon Ball the original I, I still have not I've not seen all of it I've all I, I know I've seen all of GT and all of Z but a lot of it doesn't come to mind but Dragon Ball the original I have not finished I know that for a fact so like I said the new era was coming 
So we had Bobo Bo 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 Bo. That was the most randomest freaking anime I've ever seen. It was the randomest show I've ever seen. I didn't know what was going on. I was watching it because it was interesting. I, I like it was so out there. I don't know what was going on. I liked it though. It was great. Uh, same with the this this one I saw on Fox Kids. It was One Piece. One Piece. I, I was I already liked it on on Fox Kids, so I kind of ignored One Piece for a very long time on Toonami because I was like I already seen a lot of it. I didn't know as a kid that of course we we know now. The whole Fox Kids dub. Oh uh, sorry, yeah, was it Fox? Sorry, four kids dub and the the, the what was it the the. The, the fun animation dub, you know, so I didn't know that stuff. I, I just like thought of it as the same damn thing. It's like, oh, you know, it's just One Piece, you know. <laughs> I did notice that the, the you know, the the One Piece rap is gone. <laughs> I was like, what? That did actually kind of blow my mind on that one. And I was watching it for that, but then I was like, oh, it's the same damn One Piece. So I was like, whatever. Just the rap was kind of like, like I, I remember like going back to like Fox Kids trying to see if One Piece was there. It was gone, and I was so confused. I was like, why is the rap gone? So. Anyways, uh, other shows like started, you know, showing very big popularity uh, right after Dragon Ball Z, like Naruto. Naruto, guys, God, that show was on every fucking time I got home. <laughs> it, it took over the Dragon Ball Z slot, basically. Uh, at some point, it wasn't even on Toonami's uh, block. It was like on Cartoon Network's own block, uh, just to show off. And every time I got home. It was, it was like repeating the same thing from elementary. Dude, Eno just beat Sakura in the tuning exams and all this stuff. You know, like, like it was like emotional and like, oh my god, dude, Sasuke's uh, brother, uh, fucking Itachi, he killed the whole entire Uchiha clan. You know, like stuff like that. It was like, oh my god, it was like the next Dragon Ball Z. The next big thing to talk about at school. Uh, of course, we're in, I'm in junior high at, like, I'm about to get into junior high at this point. And I, I remember going into not even my room. A lot of times, yeah, I would watch a lot of this stuff in my room. I was actually watching a lot of this stuff back in my kitchen. Uh, we had this super mini t uh, TV that we would watch, and it was connected to the cable. And I was remember watching Naruto uh, around the same time as Yu-Gi-Oh GX, I think. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh GX on just the Cartoon Network uh, block. I bet I'm Maguzi or not. And you know, I was like. I, it was like another experience of Toonami's earlier uh, time from like all Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon and, and you know Gundam and Zoids and what's not but now it's just like new versions like it's now there's Naruto replacing the Dragon Ball Z and now there's Yukio replacing you know the second love like Gundam or something you know so it was like a new version for me of, of Toonami right like it didn't have to be on Toonami but I felt like it was on Toonami uh, other show I watched, I kind of understood, I was getting hyped for it a lot, that's why I played the games and stuff, it was called Zatch Bell. Zatch Bell was like, you have to have a book, and you have to have a guy that ha that's with this book, and you have to be, f like, BFS forever, and, and then you can see you can survive with this book, or what's not, or be careful with the book. And I didn't know what the point of the show was, I, all I knew was that. You're, you're a guy that has a book, and you control a smaller guy, and you control a smaller guy to go attack other guys that have smaller guys. <laughs> that was seriously it. I watched it. I just had no idea what was going on. I really don't. So, Zatch Bell was an interesting show. I think it lasted like a year, possibly two. I want to say a year for me. I don't remember, but I remember being on the Saturday night-ish block of Tsunami. So, oh man, I miss those days. Anyways, sorry, just, just just had a little flashback. Uh, there was other like times. Um, it was it felt like the new era was starting to get better. Like I said, uh, there was a new show. It I remember watching it. Oh, good, good, good. This, this is actually the next thing I want to talk about. Actually, I'm just I'm just looking up topics and stuff I want to talk about on Toonami. Uh, it was a new show. I give it a chance. It it it, it didn't really resonates I want to say so this show was apparently one of the brand new anime that we wanted to push so bad and I remember this show sounded stupid and it kind of well it is in a way I guess you could say but I remember this other show I wanted to watch so bad on the actual website it was called Hikar uh, was it 
Hikaru no Go or something like that. It was only on Toonami Jetstream, meaning it was only on the, the the internet of Cartoon Network. So, and by the way, really quick about that, um, Toonami actually had a lot of uh, Flash video games and stuff on the actual website. It was actually pretty fun. I remember playing one of the Dragon Ball Z ones. Uh, they kept sponsoring like the shit out of. But anyways, um, I remember I did remember it loaded for a very very long time. Anyways, uh. The show I'm talking about is called The Prince of Tennis. I seriously give this one a shot. I did. I don't know why. I was like, it was a fucking tennis game. Or, you know, anime. And I watched The Prince of Tennis. I don't know how many episodes. But this is where I started to just give up. I think this, I don't know if it was the last episode or whatever. But this is where I gave up on the show. So he had like a strained arm or hand or something, right? And he's just playing tennis against some guy that's pretty really good. I don't know. And the stupidest thing, in my opinion, at the time, I don't know now if I watch it again, happens. And I'm like, what? Why is this so important? <laughs> so he, he plays tennis with his right hand, with the tennis rack, right? And because he's so tired or, or his arm is, just, like, hurting so bad, he changes the tennis rack to his left hand. And apparently it supposed to make the audience, like, like, oh my god, are you serious? Kind of like moment, and I'm like, what? What? I'm like, are you serious? What does it matter if he could play tennis with his right or his left hand I don't know if it's a big thing in the world of tennis I really don't but it they made it sound so freaking like hyped and and a miracle that he could do it it, it just like I've seen so many things else than the Prince of Tennis tell me that that's the craziest thing ever I've seen Goku kill Frieza on a planet that's blowing up and surviving, I see Naruto saved his freaking sensei and learning that he has the nine tail fox inside of him and he can control it or not, and then a lot of people die. I've seen so much shit that you're telling me that the Prince of Tennis biggest climactic moment at the time, I don't know, was he could switch his tennis rack tennis racket from his right hand to his left hand? That's what, like, I was like, what? I don't know how much longer did the show Prince of Tennis really, uh, survived. I remember I gave up when that happened. I, I finished the episode. I just don't remember if I watched anything after that. I don't. It was like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, there was, uh, I remember Pokemon being around there at around the same time. Uh, Pokemon Battle Frontier... It was being super overplayed at that time, so I didn't care for it. But I did care about Pokemon Chronicles. Uh, it was like the first spin-off Pokemon animated show. And I was like, oh cool, I can learn about Misty. And freaking Brock. And, uh, uh, was it May? No, not May yet. Uh, Tracy and all these other people that were like, where the fuck did they go? During the time of Ash not being there. And... I'm not gonna lie, I really liked the intro of the Pokemon uh, Chronicles. It was so, like, cool. It wasn't the traditional, oh, look, follow Ash and Pikachu on his adventure, on their adventures to the Sinnoh, Hoenn, Johto, Kanto, any fucking region. Follow their friends instead, or the people he has met in the past of the show, and see what the fuck they're up to. And I'm like, that's so much of a good freaking concept. I liked it. I swear to God, guys. Pokemon Chronicles was fucking great. The intro was great. I even thought it was going to be a totally different, like, show. Because the first episode or two was, like... It, it, it clearly had the main protagonist from Pokemon uh, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. The guy. Uh, with his Typhlosion. And it's something to do with Raikou, I forget. And I thought that was going to be the show. I thought we were going to follow him now. And, and, and he has a fully evolved Pokemon. He doesn't have like, a starter with a starter or anything. Even though he has a starter. But he's a fully evolved starter. So I don't know. I thought it was that. But no. It was like. 
two or three episodes, and now we're off to the sp- random people in Ash's past episodes throughout the whole entire show. So it was like a totally new environment of Pokemon. So I, it was so it was it was interesting for sure. So around the same time, like I said, the show started to well die off. So they started slowly backing out on a lot of the shows that they had because now it's 2007. They started to get desperate. I'm also clued this in 2008. They started showing shows as a Bakuman. I think that show was in the Saturday mornings of Cartoon Network. They put it on to Toonami to show more anime. And then they showed off another show that's not even anime. It's actually on Cartoon Network. It was always on Cartoon Network and now it's on Toonami. Ben 10. I think it was... I don't think it was Ben... I don't know if it was Ben 10 or Ben 10 Alien Force. So... And then they started showing Stormhawks and... And a bunch of shows that was already on Cartoon Network. It doesn't have to be on Toonami. But they just wanted to show it off so they can make Toonami still relevant. Because I, I don't know what was going on. I guess the ratings were starting to drop. I don't know. Maybe because there wasn't no more Dragon Ball Z. I don't fucking know. But they, but but the weird thing is they kept actually showing Dragon Ball Z. So I, I don't fucking know. I don't know. Maybe the hype was gone. I don't know. Uh, but I remember Yu-Gi-Oh! GX showing up. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX... I remember it being on Toonami, I was happy it was on Toonami, but I know it didn't have to be there. Uh, they were basically the same point, like, as in, uh, Toonami showing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, but later on, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX shows back, went back to, like, uh, uh, what was it, the Fox Box, or Kids WB, I forget, at some point, and the Fox Box, or Kids WB, started showing newer episodes in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX on Toonami, was like more of like reruns. That was it. Reruns uh, from before when I was talking about replays and stuff. Uh, about the show. And, and it didn't feel like it had to be there. Uh, the new show, I think it was his last hope. It was called Blue Dragon. I had no idea that Blue Dragon was even going to become an anime. Because it was a game. I knew it was a video game for the, the Xbox 360. And Blue Dragon, I remember it being the biggest game next to Halo at the time for Xbox 360. They were just sponsoring the shit out of it, and it didn't do exactly whatever he was kind of planning on for Blue Dragon. So, yeah. And in the show, I was watching it. Um, but the thing is, for Blue Dragon, it had the same problem with Bakugan. Battle Brawlers. Um, it was showing in the Saturday morning slot of Cartoon Network. So, at this point, Toonami was showing shows that was already on previous time slots, not on Toonami, and Toonami was only on one time of the week now. Other than being from the afternoon, the rising sun, uh, the midnight run, like literally every fucking day, it started dropping and dropping and dropping. At some point, it only became on Saturday nights. It wasn't even really Saturday nights. It became from Saturday afternoon to Saturday night. Before Adult Swim. So, I don't remember all the shows that was on the last run of Toonami. I remember Naruto. I remember One Piece. I remember Dragon Ball Z. And I try to remember what else. But... Those were the last three I could personally remember that was on the last showing of Toonami. Toonami ended in 2008. And on Kids WB, the, the Cartoon Network, you know, the Toonami Kids WB uh, version, it ended only for a year. It only lasted one year. Uh... I don't know if it was just like, do you want to try it for a year or anything, but I know it lasted for a year. It even shows right here in Wikipedia, actually. It shows it was only for a year. Uh, of course, a lot of my talking about what time and, and, all, and what years and all this stuff, it could be a little off track, but, I, you know, a lot of it, you know, goes to that. So here's some things that I, I just looked up, and I didn't know some of these were actually on uh, Toonami Jetstream, the whole, the, net, the internet part of Toonami. So, I did say the one show, Hikaru no Go, that was one of the biggest things. I know that they did say Naruto was, I think, showing on Jetstream. I could be wrong about that. Uh, there's Mare. 
uh, Ice Shield 21, The Prince of Tennis. Okay, maybe that's where it went. <laughs> uh, Mega Man Star Force. That's actually a show I've never honestly seen. Uh, Kiba, Mega Man Network Warrior, which that was a show again on Kids WB. And Zoid's Genesis. So, yeah. Uh, there, I guess there was some, uh, you know, like, like great moments for the original run of Toonami. I did re remember watching the Rising Sun for the Garlic Jr. part of Dragon Ball Z. The Midnight Run, it, it wasn't even Dragon, it wasn't even, sorry, it wasn't even Toonami. It was just like, thanks to Toonami, I stayed up longer than I should have on school nights to watch a very good show that I love, and it was Inuyasha. And, you know, I just want to say thanks to Toonami of the whole reality of me watching shows on Toonami. And just learning about anime and its culture and all that from just watching that. It could be the most intense thing you've ever watched, the most biggest thing you might ever experience, or it could be the weirdest shit you might have ever seen ever, or the saddest to the most goofiest. It, it was random at a lot of times. And I know I didn't say every single show on Toonami. I did skip a ton. Not a ton of ton, but a, a big few, like Thundercats, Voltron, uh, let's see here, uh, Card Capers, I actually don't even know what the hell that is, G.I. Joe, the, not the, the, the original, the, it was like a reboot one or something like that, uh, so, let's see here, uh, I don't know if I said Teen Titans, uh, let's see here, Hot Wheels, uh, Excel Racers, only. I, there was like a lot of things on here, but, um, I do want to say right before we get into the new era of Toonami, I have to say I didn't start watching the new era of Toonami. Now, I'm not saying as in I didn't want to watch it or I didn't have the time because that's bullshit. I simply don't have cable. I have lost cable back in 2011. Yes, I know, the new era of Toonami started showing in 2012 a whole full year or whatever of me waiting for Tsunami to come back now I wasn't saying oh yeah I'm gonna wait for Tsunami to come back no I remember talking to friends about Tsunami even even a possibility if it ever could come back and and all these things you know I didn't know about Steve Blum I didn't know about the voice actor of Optimus Prime I didn't know he was the guy that, that spoke I didn't even know about Optimus Prime really about Transformers I, I didn't know the vo original voice. I didn't really compare them. I didn't know much about Tom. I, I liked Tom. He was a robot. I didn't know much about Moltarx. I didn't really experience him that at all. You know? So, there was a lot of things. I Of course, I watched The Intruders. I remember watching The Intruders. That was like the most biggest thing. The original Tom died, and then the new Tom came out came out of like the, 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 the blue. And the format of the logo of Toonami became more of like a gangsta uh, kind of like Toonami sign, which... It was like during the time it makes sense like Eminem is rising in popularity of, of rap and and all these cool edgy video games are still coming out like Sonic Adventure 2 of course you know and uh, the cool thing I really liked about Tsunami as well is that they did a lot of gaming reviews did a lot of them I remember like Pikmin Legends of the Wind Waker and so much more I don't remember all of them but of course I remember a good ton uh, it, it wasn't just Nintendo, it was also Xbox and PlayStation, I, I don't remember what else, but I remember, you know, they took time and what they really liked, and it was freaking freaking awesome. And I'm sorry this video's going very long, but it's just my true expressions and feelings about the show and my, you know, my part of Toonami, what I really liked about it. So, ever since Toonami went offline, of course, I, I was one of those random people that just look up random Toonami quotes. Random Toonami pictures and videos I saw on YouTube and what's not and shows that was on Toonami And then way later on in life uh, I think it was before 2012 actually I learned about uh, a, a sh uh, what was it? A, a network uh, Internet website. That's it called Toonami Aftermath Toonami, Toonami Aftermath basically lives on the history of Toonami Uh at the time, it was it was running everything that Toonami would have ran. So, I really liked Toonami Aftermath so much that I was looking at more information about Toonami, and little did I know, there was a whole fan website 
that literally made a newer version of Toonami. It was called Neo Toonami. And what Neo Toonami is, is that what if Toonami continued? They had shows like Dragon Ball, One Piece, and of course, of course a lot of the shows was on Toonami, but they started to mix it up. Shows like, as in, what if they had these shows on Toonami? As in, X-Men, Soul Eater, uh, what was it? Uh, Bleach, uh, Kill a Kill. They started showing all these cool shows on Toonami, uh, Neo Toonami, to make you feel like it's a brand new, uh, a, a, you know, continuation of Toonami. And the cool thing about it is that they wouldn't play non-stop like Toonami Aftermath, like all day, every day, at a certain point, and then we play at like midnight, everything again. No, they would have just literally showed everything off on Neo Toonami for like two hours a day, and then that's it. Just like the regular Toonami would have. Now, that's the cool thing about Neo Toonami. Uh, the one thing I didn't like about Neo Toonami is that every time I was wanting to watch something from Neo Toonami, a lot of times I couldn't watch it because their live stream wasn't working for me. Uh, it was not going. I updated my, you know, my Flash, my my Adobe, everything. A, a lot of the times we were just not loading. It was, I think it was like on Ustream or Twitch or something. I don't remember. Uh, that they were showing these, you know, these 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 shows on Neo Toonami. And uh, Neo Toonami, to be honest, I don't even know if it's still around right now. I know Toonami Aftermath uh, is still, you know, going. Because I was just there like literally a few hours ago seeing how it was turning out to be. Uh, I'm going to Neo Toonami right now, really quick, I'm sorry, just to see what's going on. The site is still here. I still see the site. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I don't know, I was just kind of reading it, and, and, and I don't know exactly what times. But, I can't really tell from what is here on Neo Toonami, because it's just not telling me really. So, I just remember the show, this, this, this website, trying to be everything of what it can be for a new era of Neo Toonami, of, of Toonami you know? And, uh, you know, it, it looked pretty promising. Like, there's Spectacular Spider-Man, and Powerpuff Girl Z. And, uh, see, Guru Login apparently was on here at some point, so, you know, all these scenes were kind of interesting. I was also, uh, for movies, he had, uh, Fullmetal Alchemist, The Sacred Star, and Cowboy Bebop, and, and Sakura Wars, and One Piece, and what's not, right? <sighs> so, yeah, really quick getting off from Chino uh, Neo Toonami. So, of course, I did watch the April Fool's, uh, what was it? showing of Toonami. I think it was 2012, 2011. I, I, I ran to my well, yeah, ran to my cousin's house to watch it. I told her there's something big for me I wanted to watch and she's like, alright. I watched it. It was so promising. It was so freaking intense. I loved it. Now, I can't tell you I seen the newer version of Neo, of, of sorry, of Toonami. The new era. I can tell you I have seen a lot of the promos, intros, commentaries, and stuff on YouTube. Thanks to Caboose Jr. Uh, please go check out his channel. Please subscribe. Like all his stuff to support Toonami. Including go to the website on adultswim.com. So, new era from 2012 to present day. These are the shows in 2012 that was shown in Tsunami on the Adult Swim now. Because it's only one night. It's Adult Swim. Bleach, Dead Man Wonderland, uh, Kazern Sins, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Ghost in the Shell, uh, Cowboy Bebop, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, Samurai 7, Eureka 7, Symbionic Titan, Thundercats, Inuyasha, Tenshi Muyo GXP, and Naruto Uncut. I have not seen Bleach. That's something I am regretting. I have not seen Dead Man Wonderland. I heard it's great. I love Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Love it. I have not seen Kassar and Sins. I have not seen any of the Ghosts in the Shells. 
I have not seen Cowboy Bebop, Samurai 7, Eureka, Se uh, Eureka 7, Symbionic Titan, which I've heard is interesting. I have not seen the newer version of Thundercats. I've seen all of Inuyasha. I love it too. I have not seen Tenchi Muyo, GXP, and I have seen Naruto. Out of all those, they're all great to start out with. Trust me, all of them were. But I have not seen more than of them. I've only seen like three or four of them. So, yeah, Bleach, Dead Man Wonderland, Full Man Alchemist, Brotherhood, uh, Symbiotic Titan, Tenchi Muyo GXP, Inuyasha, and Naruto was probably one of the biggest ones next to Cowboy Bebop as well to show in the beginning of uh, Adult Swim. Now, by the way, a lot of the ones I just said were already on Adult Swim. They just combined it with the uh, Toonami block. So, yeah. Besides that, on to 2013, that's where I feel like we were starting to finally get somewhere. We were starting to get shows I feel like it should have been on Toonami back in the day. Or nowadays. And I was happy about some of them. Sword Art Online. I loved Sword Art Online. I first discovered it on Netflix. I know a lot of people hate it, but I really truly loved it. Also, Soul Eater. Thanks to my friend Justin, that was also a fan of Toonami. Uh, watched it all on Netflix. It was amazing. Love it. Star Wars The Clone Wars. Um, it was the final season of it being on Cartoon Network, and now it's on Disney XD. Pretty weird. Uh, because, you know, Star Wars was bought by Disney. So, uh... Big O. I didn't even know there was a second season of it. They, uh, they showed off one episode of the Fooly Cooly OVA. Uh, IGPX. That was a series I don't know much of. And One Piece. Started showing back on Toonami. In 2014, this is where we started to get more, well, back to the good old roots. Space Dandy was very big accomplishment accomplishment for Toonami because it was the first airing in Toonami's life that they show an English dub before the Japanese dub was even shown in Japan. Pretty insane. Naruto Shippuden was finally being shown on Toonami and Cartoon Network because it was originally on Disney XD. Samurai Jack, the original series uh, before, you know, the end season stuff, uh, was shown before getting into the newer ones. I get yet again. Uh, Blue Exorcist. I still haven't seen all of it. Pretty interesting so far. Black Lagoon. I never watched it. But I know it's a pretty good show. Attack on Titan. One of the biggest shows to push Toonami. Which really did. Say so which uh, Naruto Shippuden. But it was mostly Attack on Titan. Because it was brand new. Uh, Beware the Batman. Honestly, I didn't even know it was there. <laughs> uh, Girl Logan. Girl Lagan. Very good show. Very underrated. Helsing Ultimate. I have not seen it. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai. We got Dragon Ball Z back on Toonami. That's where it really shows that we, we have him back. We have Toonami back. And Inuyasha, the final act. The last season of Inuyasha. So. In the 2015, we, we kept getting crazier. We got Kill a Kill. Great show. Sword Art Online 2. Amazing show. Uh, Kagami got Kill. I have not seen it. I People have told me I should see it. Uh, Parasite the Maxim. The Maximum. Uh, same. I have not seen it. People have told me I should see it. Uh, 2016, Samurai Shampoo. Dimension W. Hunter Hunter. I was going to say uh, Samurai Shampoo and Hunter Hunter. I'm aware of the good shows. I have not seen them. I was really wanted to watch Hunter Hunter, but I kind of stopped. So I was, I was watching too many other animes at the time. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. I love that name. This sounds awesome. And, we're, and we have Gundam back? I mean, guys, we're truly back with, uh, with the whole Toonami era. One Punch Man and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. One Punch Man, I still haven't seen it. It was one of the biggest freaking anime of like all time. And it's just shown on Toonami and it just helped him so much. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, it's been out for quite some time. I've not seen it. And it's finally here in North America. We finally experienced the amazingness of it. Dragon Ball Super in 2017 and Dragon Ball Z Kai the final chapters one of the best times to watch Dragon Ball Z yet again uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn sounds kind of funny the name but I love the show Samurai Jack the revival as in the final season 
big, big into it. And Tokyo Ghoul, like, oh, hell yeah. Um, Tokyo Ghoul is like one of the biggest things next to Attack on Titan in the last few years with One Punch Man. And Fooly Cooly is coming back to Toonami with a brand new series. Guys, I don't know how long I was talking. I really have it. I really don't know. But I will tell you, yes, I have really been excited for Toonami's arrival to come back. And when I heard it was coming back, I was, ex of course, I was excited. I've been a Toonami faithful for a very long time. Uh, thanks to Toonami, I've truly loved anime. Even for anime, I think that Toonami has, should have had forever ago. And I still think they should try to get it one day. Uh, you know, I want to see Beyblade. I want to see Digimon. I want to see Monster Rancher. I want to see uh, Death Note. I love to see. Um, <laughs> shoot, I, I don't know uh, what else. Uh, Berserk. I love to see Assassination Classroom. I love to see Vampire Knight. Uh, Fruit Basket. Uh, fairy Tale. I mean, there's so many that can go on and on. Uh, even Yu-Gi-Oh! again. It could be Arc 5 for when it comes out over here, if it does come out. Or just show off 5Ds or something. I don't know. Just uh, There's so much they could show. I wish Toonami wasn't just Saturday, morning, uh, Saturday nights. I wish they were back to their glory days of showing really a certain time of the day. Mostly nighttime. I would say every day. But possibly not Sunday, but who knows. Um, yeah, I miss Toonami. Even though I can't support him by watching them, even though I support him by YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and their website themselves, I will still be always a Toonami faithful. And I want to say thank you to all my precious memories, I swear, of Toonami. It's, it's been a wild ride, and I hopefully it keeps going for, you know... As long as it possibly can, yet again, and I don't want to see it go away, uh, because nowadays we have the power. The fans have more power nowadays. We have the internet. We we can express our feelings. We can we can make things happen. And I want to say thank you so much, not to just myself, you know, pushing this thing to come back one day. Because I, I don't feel like I've really done anything. I just want to talk about Tsunami all the time. I don't want to say all the fans. Thanks. I mean, now you're you're not just for you guys, but now you're making new memories for the newer generation of, of kids and preteens and just teenagers of watching Tsunami on their Saturday nights. After they can't go out or they can't go out. And even if they can't or do go out, they always have that option to turn on Tsunami for when they want to watch something amazing. That's something I truly like. So once again, everybody, I just want to say thank you for watch, uh, just like listening. I don't know what this is. A discuss it's not even a discussion. It's just for thank you for like listening to my story of my memories on Toonami. Um, it it's been a, it's pretty, it's been a very long journey. I, I can't believe it's been 20 years. I haven't been watching Toonami for 20 years, of course, but it, it feels so much like I have. Probably like in a year or two, I could say literally 20 years, but it's been crazy. It's been crazy. Uh, so once again, if you like what you heard or anything, like I said, please like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment below. And uh, yeah, uh, I would say tell me something you loved about Tsunami. Or if you haven't seen it, please go to Cartoon Network uh, dot com and go to Adult Swim and go to the Toonami, uh, you know, part of it. And or just turn on your TV during Cartoon Network's Midnight Run on Saturday morning, uh, Saturday nights, and it's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Toonami. So, yeah. Once again, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys all for the next one. All right. Bye.